In this section, we're going to talk about normal probability plots. You see here we have a small set of numbers that I randomly generated. We're going to create a histogram of that data to see if the data looks normal. And a lot of people, if they looked at this graph, would say, yeah, that looks pretty normal. One thing we can do, though, is we can change the number of groups that we have, or change the class size in our data set. So if we change the binning and mini tab, instead of having six intervals, breaking up the data into six intervals, I'm going to break it up into ten intervals. Now, a lot of people who looked at that data would say, well, that doesn't look very normally distributed. The problem is that when you have small sample sizes, histograms can be fairly deceiving on whether the data really looks normal or not. With small sample sizes, we're never certain that the data came from a normal distribution. We simply can say that if the data is highly skewed or has extreme outliers, it's unlikely to come from a normal distribution. Because histograms are not very reliable, we're going to use normal probability plots, which tend to be a little bit better in determining whether the data fit the normality assumption. So to create a normal probability plot, we take our original data and we sort it. After the data is sorted, I'm just going to write down um, the numbers in which we observe here. This is the first observation, the second, the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, and tenth. And then I'm going to calculate the percentiles within this distribution. You've done this before probably by finding Q1 or Q3, the 25th percentile, the median or 50th percentile. We're going to determine the percentiles for each one of those. And actually, it's a fairly simple calculation. You can just go Calc, Calculator. And I'm going to store the results in C3. And I'm just going to take C2, which is the order in which each number comes, minus 0.5 divided by 10. So in essence, we're saying that the fifth percentile of the data is 12.9699. We can see here that the 50th percentile would fall exactly between the 21.08 and the 21.998. Now the next step is to find what number in the standard normal distribution corresponds to this percentile. So we can go to Calc, Probability Distributions, Normal, and we want to find the inverse cumulative probability. In C3, we have the 5th percentile, the 15th percentile, the 25th percentile, and so forth. And we're going to store those results in C4. So what we have is our original sample data that is sorted. We have our ordering of the data, which we use to represent the ith observation in this sorted data set. We calculate i minus 0.5 over n to calculate the actual percentile from the original data. Then we find the number from the standard normal distribution that also corresponds to that percentile. When we're finding percentiles from a standard normal distribution, we are simply calculating the percentile or the expected percentage of data points that will fall below a particular number. In our example, we're looking for the fifth percentile what value in the standard normal distribution has 5% of our data smaller than that number and 95% of our data greater than that number. And if you look in the standard normal table, you see that negative 1.645 is the value which represents the fifth percentile. In the same way, we can find the 95th percentile, which means 95% are below and 5% are above, and in the standard normal distribution, we know that 95% of the data points will be below 1.645 and 5% will be above. After finding the values in the standard normal distribution that fit each one of our percentiles, we can now compare the standard normal distribution to our sample data set. So to create a normal probability plot, all we do is plot our original data versus the standard data. And we see that the data essentially falls in a straight line. Fortunately, computer software often creates standard normal probability plots for us. So we can just go stat, basic statistics, normality test, and plot our original data. 
and it, it doesn't provide the line, but you can see that these data points fall exactly in the same positions in both graphs. So you note in these graphs that the y-axis looks different because the normal probability plot created by software just plots the percentages where we actually plotted the values that came directly from the standard normal distribution, but you see the results are essentially the same. So what does this really tell us? For example, let's say we take this 10th observation here, which is 31, and we change it to a 51.29. If we do a graph of that data, we see that we have one observation that is now quite a ways away from the rest of them. What impact does that have on the normal probability plots? Notice that the ordering stays the same, the percentile stayed the same, and the values from the z-table stay the same. The only thing different is this value. So if we create a probability plot, what we see is we have our original data, but our x value is much more extreme. In this example, we have 10,000 values that seem to fit the normal distribution very well. So conducting a normal probability plot of this data looks very normal. You see that the percentages that we observe fall almost perfectly along this line. Here I've generated a data set, which we called F because I generated it from the F distribution with 8 and 20 degrees of freedom. And you see that there's some clear skewness going on. We have points that are too far to the right and not enough points that are to the left. How does this represent itself in a normal probability plot? What we see here is essentially some curvature. These points here in order to be truly normal, we'd expect them to extend out farther. So these points here would extend out farther along this line. These points over here are too far out compared to the percentiles that we would expect. For example, we'd expect data in the 90th to 95th percentile to fall somewhere in this range, not all the way out here. So we are too far to the right to follow what we'd expect to happen if it was truly normal. Here we have a graph, actually from a uniform distribution. If it was truly a normal distribution, we'd expect it to have much more of a bell-shaped pattern than this somewhat square-shaped pattern that we have. Again, if this data truly came from the normal distribution, we'd expect to have a few observations, well, a little bit smaller than 11.25 and greater than 18.75. How does this represent itself in a normal probability plot? You see here this upside-down S-shaped pattern indicates that we have more clustering than we expected within our data set. We don't have the observations that are lower than 11.25 or greater than 18.75 that we would expect if it was truly from a normal distribution. So finally, I've created one more example distribution and you can see here that we have data that tends to be more extreme than our standard normal distribution data points that go well beyond what we'd expect them to in the endpoints. So if we created a normal probability plot of this data, what shape would you expect to see? What we find is almost an S-shaped pattern where we have data that is more extreme, much smaller and larger than we would expect if it truly fell along the line that fits the standard normal distribution.